What is up, guys? Of course, welcome back to another, of course, VPL Wi Fi battle, which is, of course, the Scaranger. And yeah, we actually are in our playoff match. And um, before I go into that, and of course, you see my opponent's team here that I'm also heavily prepping for, it should say that there are two VPL matches that are not uploaded, and they're up not uploaded because uh, the update on. Um, <laughs> on the, the Wi-Fi basically eradicated and erased every game so I wasn't able to record them before I wasn't able to of course record on myself my capture card which is really unfortunate one of them was really 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 nice the other one was a uh, complete decimated battle against uh, Darude which actually he won 5-0 so <laughs> and he deserves every one of that uh, his prep was kind of weird and it did work really nicely uh, so with that said, here's my opponent's team. We're going up against another playoff match. We're going against uh, the Quebec City Betix, and uh, he has a team of Extreme Volcanion, Raikou, Halucha, Weezing, Gigalith, Tangro, Mega Garchomp, Kikleon, and Metang. And I felt initially that Tangro is probably the one that will tackle my team best. And also likes a Weezing do wall my offensive threats really well and could definitely in the long run uh, keep me off guard basically because I do have a brilliant on my team which is something that could eradicate his team rather nicely if I get to him and to pull that off. So Tangaroff, Weezing are the Pokemon there that are my biggest threats. And with that said, I'm going to talk about my whole set. So, Strana and Hera is, of course, the matchup we're going up against, and we don't see neither Weezing nor do we see Tangro. So, I both was glad at the same time to realize that we are facing Pokemon here that I might not have prepped for too well, such, of course, Kecleon. Uh, other than that, we do say x Gigalith, Gigalifts, so we know it's a, it's a Sand Core, uh, Halucha, which could actually really really eradicate me really nicely rather easily if uh, one of my defensive checks is not intact volcanion is manageable brico is annoying because it's fast and uh, could definitely um, in the long run pressure my team if i don't will it down uh, i need to be uh, below 60 somewhere to actually be able to want to care with with uh, but yeah with that said my team is of a defensive gliscor with toxic orb um, you know exactly what its job is. It's to not fall, basically. It's a quick Ice Fang uh, to be able to hit everything super effectively on his team at the same time that we have Roost and uh, Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rocks could help me with Volcanion and also get the ship damage on the right because I really desperately needed. Uh, my Alolan Muck, which for this spell actually had the wrong ability. Was well, supposed to have gluttony with figberry. It does have figberry, but it's not a gluttony, and it's a series of knockoff, poison jab, pursuit, and brick break. And it should be able to hit super effectively everything the team besides how lucha, uh, Jellicent, defensive variant with a bit of speed to be able to actually outspeed a possible faster Tangro. Uh, its complete set is Scald Ice Beam, and then we we'll have Toxic and Recover. Its main purpose here is also like Glisco to be defensively active and not fall too easily. And we have Toxic or Will West mainly because of Volcanion, so I'm able to do something with it. Uh, Volcanion can't necessarily hurt me, and the same thing goes for me, so Toxic is my main play against it. Tapu Koko, though, is one of those that could be hard to use this spell depending on how my opponent plays his exit drill. Uh, but as stated, not seeing Tangro really, really, really helpful. We have T Bolt here, we have um, Hidden Power, Fire, Dazzling Gleam, and um, Grass Knot, I do believe. Uh, so, a series of super effective hits and just basically hit whatever comes his way and hope that it dies when it does it. Uh, it should definitely be said that there are a few Pokemon here at uh, South Speed. It's, uh, and Exeril is one of those, and also how Lucha, after an Unburden, is also faster. And the Necrobatics actually does around 50% because. Even though it's a resisted hit, it should be said that, that Tabu Coco sadly is not that defensively in the end anyway. So it's not a check for it, sadly. Uh, it's now of Tauros. Tauros fully speed here, so it's not able to have speed Raikou, right, neither Halucha. But it has Body Slam, sent it by the Earthquake, and Ice Beam. Ice Beam here was for the Mega Garchomp, which was not making it. Uh, sent Headbutt was for, of course, the Weezing, which didn't make it. So this team is definitely eradicated by Body Slam and Earthquake combination. 
uh, but should also be said I do not have speed everything his team so it's an issue on its own but I do believe the damage I put is there and it's very hard to switch into Tauros with that in mind. Uh, my other Pokemon is Breloom and it's a choice banded variant. Basically here I needed to get out of, or try to get out of um, my opponent's defensive check against me and then basically spam Mag Punch. Uh, because Excadrill is one shot a bite where I could die with around 60%, Volcanion dies around 50%, uh, and Kecleon dies around 100%, no doubt. But um, other than that, of course, the checks here were Tangrowth and Weezing, which were Pokemon that I definitely believe defensively active could pressure it down and not do it most as I wanted. And of course, Rocky Helmet is always a thing, therefore, not Life Orb. Bandit made the most sense for this boy. Well, so not seeing. Weezing or Tangra was, like I said from the beginning, it's very good not to be able to see them because it means that I can offensively check a lot of Pokemons with Breloom, but at the same time, I do face Pokemons here that I may not actually have prep for all too well, and like I stated here, Kecleon is one of those that could be anything, and it could defensively be super hard to maneuver against. Uh, with the likes of actually carrying, knockoff, ice punch, drain punch. There are a lot of things here that does hurt my team really nicely. It even learns gunshot. So, yeah, going into this game, I felt that this isn't a disadvantage for me and I need to find a way to work around it. And whether or not that helps, yeah, that's extremely debatable. And throughout the matchup, you're going to see that this was initially a struggle here. And when. <laughs> It was not that easy to see in which one was going to come out on top. But hell, I shouldn't tell you more about, of course, the game. I should actually show you what actually happened. And yeah, this is playoff. So, you know, if we don't win this one, we are knocked out. And that is unfortunate if that happens. So, we, yeah, with all that said, let's, of course, go into the match. So, from the start here, I'll actually lead with the score, trying to get my Stealth Rocks up as fast as I can as we're gonna see in lead with Kecleon, and that's an issue because Ice Punch could very well one-shot me, so I need to switch out, and I only have one switch in here which is Yellicent, and he's gonna predict this really nicely and go for a knockoff. It could actually just knocked off for the Toxic Ball, but either way, it works in his favor, and we get our left doors knocked out and also get heavy amount of damage on the Necronimbusa. So all I really can do here is go for recover, basically hoping that I can get enough HP to kind of wiggle around with it. But actually hard switches out to Alonso his Volcanion, which works for me. Uh, it could very possibly be that he has Toxic, which could work in my favor. Uh, but actually switches out and uh, I felt really surprised about that. I felt that Toxic would have been an optimal play here. I was actually switching Raikou and that's good because we now we get residual damage that I so desperately need on this Pokemon because I stated I can't necessarily outspeed it. And uh, all the residual damage here are very, very good for me. But at the same time, um, there is really not a whole lot I can do here. I need to switch out. The Thunderbolt could very well KO me. And uh, I'm going to bring in my Lola Muck, which is especially defensive and should be able to take any hits. But with that said, uh, it does mean that he can go save for a ball switch and get momentum he needs. And the momentum he needs is, of course, his Gigalith. So now the sand is active and... Um, I need to play around it as well as I can, and I only have one switch in here, which of course is Gliscor, and I will get my Toxic Orb activated. So all I was feeling it, don't switch into Kecleon here and force me out, as he luckily go for Stealth Rock, and that's good. That means that I can do the same, and since he lack a spinner on his team, or x could be a possible spinner, but he doesn't want to spin against an x uh, I can easily get up my rocks here without need to worry, as we see how Lucha comes in, and... Um, for this area, it could be really, really nasty. I need to go for an Ice Wing. I can't switch out against this Pokemon. And um, it should be said it here that I was very scared that he was a weakness policy. That luckily, he has the Power Herb Sky Attack. And since I am max defense, it will do a lot of damage onto me. But I am built to not be too shotted by it. So. We are in a good range here, we definitely are in a good range, and Ice Fang will of course connect to around 50% and we are gonna get the Freeze. And that is very very unfortunate for my opponent, but at the same time, uh, against this matchup it doesn't mean anything by that. I mean, it can definitely defensively whittle it down no matter what, he would have been forced to switch out here anyway, as he's gonna bring on his Brikovsky, being of course a Kecleon, and um, I'm just gonna go for safe roost, I need to be as healthy as possible so the extra really does not was then sweep me. Um, I don't want to deal with that. And um, from here on out, all I really can do is switch in my Jellicent and try to bait him, actually. I know that he has to have Shadow Snake for this matchup, so 
All I'm gonna do here is bring it in, toxic him, try to wheel him down a little bit, try to force a switch. As a course goes for safe ice punch, which is really good. And I know he's definitely gonna follow that up by a knockoff, and it's gonna do a lot of damage onto me. So much so that Shadow Sneak should be a KO. So um, yeah, basically I'm aiming for Toxic. I want to wheel him down and basically bring in my Lola Muck in the end of that matchup. So we get to Toxic. Sadly though, I was predicting this thing to be Assault Vista. That is not the case. It's a Lumber set, so the Toxic will be, of course, recovered as the knockoff will force me down in the way I really thought it would be. And now I should definitely, he should definitely try to wrap that up with, of course, a Shadow Sneak onto my Jillison. So as stated, I'm gonna go for Lola Muck and I'm gonna try to pursue trap him here because there is no way that he's gonna try to stay and, and try to survive it, though the Toxic would have definitely helped here. Um, so he goes for the Shadow Sneak and um, yeah, it shouldn't do a lot here. I don't think anything he can do should do a lot. And since the lackluster in defense of Kecleon, I should be able to do a lot of damage even if he doesn't switch out. Luckily, he does decide to do so, and we get the Kecleon out of the way. And I did fall exactly on my play there that I really, really was debating him to do this, and I was really hoping it would pay off. So it's very lucky for me, clearly, because I needed every chance of momentum to actually be able to pull this off. So now a major threat for Gliscor is out of the way, which of course can spam an Ice Punch. So I'm actually going to sack my Necromedusa here as... Um, he goes for Steam Eruption, which is good for us, because that means that Jellicent is actually active now. It's not a sack far anymore, it actually is. <laughs> it's recovered, it's back on track, and I can easily go for a recover, as my opponent is actually going to sack play his Howlucha. Now, of course, with that said, he could easily have gone to Raikou here and just straight force me out yet again. Um, so I'm very lucky he doesn't do that, and we actually get the KO on the Howlucha. Uh, now I'm pretty sure he went for an acrobatics there and that would have done a lot of damage onto us as we go for Ice Beam and KO the Lucha. And uh, yeah, that's also a major threat out of the way. The only thing now out speed, um, <laughs> or actually only Raikou is now his speedy threat left which Taurus can't handle and that's really good to know as um, it's toxic clearly and I need to switch out yet again. Uh, I know Volt Switch is his play, I know that that's the only play he can go for. As here's where I realized that I'm not gluttony, <laughs> even though I go below 50%. Uh, luckily though, Thunderbolt is not a KO, though pretty darn close to it, as Figure Berry is going to be, of course, activated. Uh, now from here on out, I actually decided not to go for Pursuit. I rather was hoping he would go for Volt Switch and get some residual damage on anything else. Uh, and definitely didn't want to see anything like x coming in rather healthy and not having a Sash or an Air Balloon or anything like that. So I decided to go for Knockoff. I think it was an optimal play for this situation. As... Um, uh, of course, with Stealth Rocks, the Sash is broken anyway, but you don't see an Air Balloon and we don't knock off anything. So we know that this is a C-move Pokemon, and I need to switch out and go directly to Gliscor and basically try to soak him before he goes for a Sword Stance. Uh, luckily here, it does go directly for an Iron Head, so I think, alright, I can probably take two of these, and um, I can definitely threaten him out with an Earthquake, and I can go for Earthquake anyway, but he actually will showcase that he's a Corkscrew Drive, I do believe this move is called, and... Uh, that could very well KO me from this range. I'll even say so much that I did not prep for this damage output whatsoever. And I was basically looking like, you know, he's gonna get momentum he needs and this is gonna be turned really ugly. But no, we actually, for some freaking reason, survive. We barely survived that. Uh, it, sh it should be said though that had a KO me, I would have gone for Brelum here and tried to go for the Mag, Ma uh, Mag Punch sweep. And I'm saying trying because there are still a few Pokemon that may actually survive it. One of those being Volcanion. So he goes to actually his Raikou here and trying to force me out. He definitely can go for a Shadow Ball and should easily KO me. But I feel like my best chance here is actually go to Mach, hoping he goes for Shadow Ball. Uh, or even better, go for a Thunderbolt. And if anything to try to kill me, or I mean Hidden Power Eye, it's basically nothing that kills me by one shot. As we see, of course, Shadow Ball and will not KO and get more damage output on, of course, with a Toxic Mine. Which is basically all I needed. It's all I needed for this optimal play, as it's gonna go for the Thunderbolt yet again, and this time, of course, gonna KO. So that is where my first Pokemon falls, actually. And um, we are now in a very good range where Brelum should be able to wrap this game up. Um, it's not completely optimal, but it's definitely up there. And I don't think he has a switch in for the back punch. He's definitely gonna sack the Raikou here, as he's gonna follow that up with his Volcanion. Now, Volcanion here is a role depending on his set, because we are pushing him 50%, which is 
basically all we needed, but at the same time, if it is defensive, it could survive the mag punch, but we don't get to find that out because we get a very, very lucky crit here and gonna knock out Vulcanion. And his last Pokemon is the Gigalith. And at this time, you guys have probably figured out that we are going for the quarterfinals. We are being. <laughs> We actually managed to survive this game because Tid was actually the best player before playoff and I'll even go so far and say that he still is. I think it was a really unlucky here and didn't necessarily bring the defensive threats that he probably needed to be able to wrap up this game more nicely and I get to play as offensive as I can and that really just works in my favor for this specific matchup. So yeah, with that said, I'm going to of course talk a little bit about the game, not being too lengthy here, but first of all, I'm going to of course say to Matt or Tid, thank you so much for that game, it was a very, very strong game overall, but as I said here, um, I definitely was over prepping for a few Pokemons that didn't make it here, and Tangrowth, Weezing were one of those, Weezing I felt overall could defensively be very, very annoying for me, the stockpile set would definitely uh, push me back really nicely, and uh, I didn't know how to tackle that necessarily. I had offensive threats to try to wield that around, but not be forced to dealing with it was, I think, extremely helpful for me because that meant that my offensive threats that I was bringing for this matchup did a lot more work than they were supposed to do. Uh, same thing with Tangro. While my opponent here did fear the Mega Pidgeot and being able to hurricane spam him, um, I optimized to not bring Mega Pidgeot, and I think. Um, that actually worked in my favor. I think having a pigeon on my team definitely made him over prep for stuff and I didn't make it here either. And overall, not bringing Tangro, I think, was a mistake because it dealt so well with my overarching theme here. Um, I didn't have necessarily anything that could care with naturally outside of Alola Muck. And even at that, he could easily have um, EV'd him to be fast enough to be able to quake me and do a lot of damage onto my Alola Muck no matter what. Uh, with that said, though, you know, we are making it to, of course, the quarterfinals, and I think we are really lucky here to actually be able to do so, because the matchup was allowing it, not necessarily the plays my opponent was making. I definitely believe, had he had the right team, he would have won this game. Uh, Matt is one of those players that just, um, very meta-heavy, um, he does a lot of things right, and this is probably one of the few times where the matchup decides the game more than the plays themselves, and, uh, yeah, I'm lucky to actually come out on top, to be completely honest. Uh, so that's it guys, thank you of course so much for watching, and of course follow up, follow us up with of course um, quarterfinal match against Carl Oscar or the bearded BHMs, which will come next week. Uh, so yeah, that's it guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video, till then, take care, bye.